What I'm going to present is a, uh, a look at the views using SurfCam um, to actually machine this part out. And what I want to do is pull up a uh, file, basically this file that I've got with, with a few alt alterations, less some of the geometry that I've actually got deleted. So let me pull this file up and let's take a look at it in the solids mode. And that's basically what I'm going to be working with. What the intent is um, with this presentation and with this setup is to show us how to create a true view which would match a setup on the machine um, for this particular pocket that's going to be an insert for a die detail. So we're basically going to take a piece of uh, D2 or something like that and put it in this pocket for as a pierce unit or a pierce station. So what I want to do now is... Um, to start looking at some of the things I've got in this part. I want to see what's already been given to me on this. Um, it looks like there's already a pocket view, so I'm going to delete that out of the system and say that's okay. First thing I want to do when I'm working with this is I want to edit the surfaces and I want to edit the display of the surface so when I look at it in wireframe I don't see such a what I'd call a, a high UV grid of that of those surfaces. So what I want to do now is establish a um, a first tip angle and what I, the way I'm going to do that is set my construction view to front and I'm going to basically do a projection in kind of a uh, slightly different manner. I'm not going to actually create the splines I'm just going to create two horizontal lines and then I'm going to trim those horizontal line back to the bottom line which represents the bottom plane. So with that in mind I'm going to say create line I'm going to create a end line by endpoints using these two different endpoints and then I'm going to delete the vertical lines which was just construction lines. So basically I've got what I'm going to call my first line segment um, for my first tip. So what I want to do now is I want to create a line by endpoints and let's go ahead and say create a line <coughs> um, and let's create a horizontal line uh, about this or let's create a vertical line I'm sorry about this endpoint right here so then let's go ahead and delete that horizontal line so basically what I've got is two lines and the reason why I'm going to pull that up is I want to create a view um, from my left or create a dimension from my left view so I'm going to say create a text dimension an angular from this to this line segment and what I've got there is basically my dimension that I'm looking for and this is something we would want to coordinate closely with the operator or whoever's in charge of setting it up yourself or this is something we want to make sure that this number matches the tip that you've got as far as the machine goes and the sign let's say for instance in a sign plate so let's go ahead and select our dimension to make it a four place dimension and then say okay so that's my first tip in this particular case and is 3.9902 so with that first tip um, what I want to do now is I want to create a series of additional lines which are going to I'm going to use for my plane selection so I'm going to say copy rotate this single entity rotate it 90 degrees about this endpoint right here three times okay with those four lines I can actually construct a new view <coughs> I actually construct a series of views so I could say create a line um, actually a cross product line from here and here about this endpoint and then here and here about this endpoint. So this is just a little bit of information that I need to create the secondary view, which will be my true view. So what I want to do now is I want to say create um, a. Actually, I want to set that to be my. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to create a uh, first tip view. type it in right I'm gonna call this first tip view and the work offset doesn't matter because it's just a reference view basically 
and then what I want to do is I want to select and use a normal selection and if you look in the lower left hand corner it's saying select the first point on the z-axis so I'm going to pick the central point of these six lines and then I'm going to say pick it in a positive direction and it's going to ask me for my point on the x direction of course this is again positive and then it's asking me for the local origin so that's my z so if I know my z and I know my x y is going to follow so what I've got now is my first tip view and I'm calling that view 9 so what I want to do is I want to create a line selection a horizontal line selection and I'm going to do that about a sketch point and I'm just going to say okay right there is fine and then uh, actually what I want to do is I want to move that five inches uh, deeper, I'll say six inches deeper, and then just pick a point again so that, and this will keep my geometry from getting cluttered. I want it kind of away from that detail. So, what I want to do now is um, I'm going to say create a surface. And this is just going to be as a plane, and I'm going to use the keyboard as, um, as my. Uh, as my, I'm going to type in my vector for my plane is going to be in the x negative value which as we see here it's going to be uh, up from here so let's go ahead and pick uh, 15 inches is fine and let's just pick a single entity and then tell it we're done so now to establish my second view or the primary view that I'm going to work with as far as the toolpath I'm going to actually create a spline this time and I'm going to project it um, in the construction view which is set right here um, I'm going to use that surface is what I'm going to project and I'm going to project this edge of the pocket okay now what I want to do is create a line from the endpoints and then I'm simply going to delete that piece of geometry I'm going to set my mask up to delete a particular spline and then I know that spline has gone so now, as I did down here, and, and to create the additional lines, I'm going to say transform on a copy, rotate the single piece of geometry 90 degrees, and let's say about this endpoint three times. And then with that, I could say create a line, a cross product line, here and here about this endpoint, and then vice versa. So basically, this is the geometry I need in order to create my secondary view. So what I'm going to look for is the pictures that tell me what that view looks like on the machine. So if I look at this picture right here, it looks like my X runs to my right, my Y runs up, then of course Z is perpendicular to this face. So if I've got a couple other pictures to look at the particular setup, this one looks like it's from the front of the machine. Um, this pin right here is for the sign plate which dictates the angle that our tip is on and that's again the 3.009 degree tip that uh, we dimensioned first off. So what I want to do now is actually create another view. So approximately my view should look something like this. Okay, and I'll get it into actual an actual true view. So let's go ahead with our view selection and I'm going to say true view tip. and that's going to be view 10 and I don't necessarily have to work worry about a work offset so with that in mind what I want to do is I want to say about three points this time saying my first point is the center the second point in the positive direction is to my right my positive direction for the y-axis is up and then my local zero will be the center of that tooling ball okay so that construction plane should be a true view of this pocket in the machine setup. So let's go to view for parent child and let's set our view to top and there we have our true view. So now with that in mind what I can do is use one of my favorite features of the software. I could say I want to go ahead with a two axis true milk cut. Also I want to have this set to view and then what I want to do is use this pocket and say go ahead and close And then I'm done. 
and I'm going to say, okay, a half inch bundle is fine. That's the bottom of the pocket. Um, the depth is defined by these two line segments. And the finish, I'll specify one inch depth of cut. And let's say for that half inch cutter, let's say a 35 degree tool engagement. Let's go ahead and accept it. And there we have our pocket.